HR professionals are often apprehensive when it comes to dealing with issues involving employees on leave, according to Lauren Bernardi, a lawyer with Mississauga, Ontario-based Bernardi Human Resource Law. Lauren sat down with Canadian HR Reporter TV to talk about how HR can deal with contentious leave issues without fearing repercussion. People that are on disability leave, it's probably the single trickiest issue that there is. So it's really about figuring out when you can decide to do something a little stronger, to take a stronger step. Employers are often afraid to push back when employees don't provide enough information. Employees frequently give you just um, a doctor's note on a prescription pad. They might as well have a rubber stamp because it just says under medical care will be reassessed in two weeks. And employers are often afraid to push back and ask for more information. So much of that uh, component was about dealing with those issues and what employers can do to take stronger steps. What steps should employers take if they're suspicious of an employee's leave? Asking for more medical information is the biggest thing. I think sometimes we're a little bit hesitant to push people, but what you can do is indicate that the information is insufficient. Employees have a duty to cooperate by providing information, so you can give a functional abilities form for the employee to take to their doctor to complete specific information about their restrictions and limitations. If that doesn't work, you could also consider doing an independent medical examination. There was an interesting case came out not too long ago in a human rights tribunal hearing where an individual said they were being harassed because they kept getting asked for doctor's notes. And the tribunal found it wasn't harassment, and the reason it wasn't harassment was because she wasn't giving the information. So they just kept asking, please give us the information. They, she kept giving back the same kind of prescription pad answer, and so they said enough, and they terminated her, and she said that was harassment. The tribun tribunal said it's not. So that really shows that employers do have some, some rights in the workplace. Does an employer need to worry about its approach when asking for more information? I think what you have to do is be fair and respectful. But you also have a workplace to manage. You need to know when somebody's coming back or if they're coming back. You have to fill that work with somebody having them to do the job. Maybe other people have to take over their duties. It's fair to other people to know the parameters about when the person can come back under what restrictions. So I'm not suggesting that employers be hard-nosed, but more that they be firm and not afraid. Is it possible to terminate an employee while they're on pregnancy leave? The issue is really whether or not you are punishing somebody for being pregnant or being on a leave. People who are pregnant or on a leave don't have a higher protection than other people. It's just that can't be any part of a decision to terminate someone. But often what employers will do is they'll make a decision to terminate someone. That person comes in and says, I'm pregnant, and they go, oops, and they stick the termination letter in the drawer when they'd already planned to do it. So you can, you can still go ahead with those things because you'd already pre-planned it, especially if you have the documents to show you'd already created the termination letter, maybe you had communicated by email with somebody else, maybe the person's manager, the decision to terminate. So there's nothing that says you can't do it then, it's just if it was because they were pregnant, that would be a problem. The other way that the pregnancy becomes an issue is in downsizing. So you downsize, say, 15 people from your organization, and one of them happens to be on leave. Maybe two of them happen to be on leave. And those people will complain and say, the reason you're terminating me is because of that. Well, as long as you can show you applied objective criteria, you weren't using their pregnancy, you know, or the downsizing rather as an excuse to terminate somebody on leave, then you're fine. Where else might employers have difficulty? So there's been a number of cases that dealt with family status accommodation, which means accommodating somebody who has childcare needs or even someone who has elder care needs. And often employers have felt like if somebody says they need to come in late every day because they have childcare responsibilities that they have to accommodate that. And there was a line of cases that really kind of extended the family status accommodation to make it pretty, pretty broad and, and impose a big burden on employers. But we had a recent case that looked at it from an elder care standpoint that said, you know, it's really only if the person has an obligation as opposed to a preference. So if I prefer to have my child at a private school and I have to drive the kid to the private school, well then it's not up to the employer to say, okay, you can come in later because you have to drive the child. But if I have a child with a special need that has to go to a special school and I have to drive them, a different consideration would apply. So it's just looking at balancing between what we prefer and what is required and when it's a requirement, the employer needs to accommodate. But that's it.